Hey guys, it's Brett. Thanks for dropping by my channel. So today I wanted to talk about some book mail that I received, but first I wanted to briefly talk about the Aspen Words Literary Prize long list, which was announced on Monday of this week. Uh, the Aspen Prize is a literary prize that uh, is designed to the award itself, I should say, is designed to celebrate fiction that explores vital contemporary issues and demonstrates the transformative power of literature. I read this, the whole long list last year with a group of people over on Instagram and it was truly a great experience, not only to have uh, like a discussion ongoing with all these different books, but it was a fantastic group of authors and has slowly become one of my favorite um, literary prize lists. So their list came out on Monday. Five, I'm looking down because I'm just referring to the titles. Uh, Four of these titles I have already read, including uh, If I Survive You by Jonathan Escoffrey, All This Could Be Different by Sarah Thanka Matthews, uh, The Haunting of Haji Hotak by Hamil Han Kochai, and Memphis by uh, Tara Stringfellow. Um, everyone, all the rest of them I haven't. So I've ordered some of them. I put others on hold at the library. There's a few that I found on Scribid that, I, that I'm going to listen to to try to get through it. I have to say of the ones I've read so far, um, this is, first of all, this is an extremely, extremely diverse list, which is really cool to see. I don't think, frankly, from what I can tell of this, there are no white authors uh, on here. And I'm going to probably showing now the list as a whole from the Aspen words and you can pause the screen. I'll also try to put all the titles down below. But um, the, th the four that I've read, three of them I thought were, were totally solid books, including the Escoffrey book, All This Could Be Different, and Memphis. Totally enjoyable reads, well-written books. Did I find them uh, earth shattering? No. I think any one of them I would recommend to somebody if they say, hey, what's a good book you read lately? I would totally recommend that book. I've got to adjust this suddenly because I think I might be off. Um, the one that is, I, and I've talked about this before, that I did think is special is The, the Haunting of Haji, uh, Haji Hotak. Um, and I will say this with a caveat. There are a lot of, in regards to this book, but also a lot of what is on this list, a lot of short story collections here. I am not, and I've said this before, a big short story fan. I've become, uh, I've l been learning to appreciate them more as I continue to read. And I, my only problem with short story collections, if it's a problem even, is that I feel that they're always very hit or miss to me. And so I get through the book and say like, even if I like 70% of it, 30% I didn't. And it's just a different experience to me than reading a book. And I like spending time with characters and story that will go, you know, the length of a book, 200 to 700, 800 pages versus 25 pages and then you're on to the next. Um, but there are some people who do it very well. Hamil Kachai does it very well. So. Um, I say that only because there's more short story collections in here, but I'm interested to see, obviously, um, uh, The Town of Babylon, I'm very interested in reading, and I've had that on my list before. I, I really want to read uh, The Last White Man, um, and <laughs> I'm not escaping glory. I've put it off and put it off and didn't read it when it was up for um, the Booker Prize. And uh, <laughs> so I really feel like um, I am gonna have to read it. <laughs> okay, so moving on, um, one other bit of, bit of business. I, um, for those of you who have taken my challenge of the 10 before the end, I just hope it's all going well for you. And if you don't finish your 10 before the end, who cares that maybe you at least got three before the end or some before the end um, and a list that you can carry on into January. I personally um, have, I'm now down to four before the end. I just finished my sixth book uh, earlier today, um, which was a HarperCollins title, so I'm not gonna talk about it. Although to say 
very provocative, really one of the more interesting books that I've read this year, and it's unfortunate that I uh, that HarperCollins is um, going through the strike and that the workers have asked us to not promote their books while this is going on, and they're trying to get HarperCollins to the negotiating table to get a fair wage, because this book was very good. <laughs> which I won't be talking about. All right, so the four that I have left to still read, uh, Build Your House Around My Body, which I'm going to read next. I'm gonna do this on audio as well, trying to keep this speed train moving. Um, Shrines of Gaiety by Kate Atkinson. Now let me tell you guys, let me ask you guys, between Shrines of Gaiety and The Rabbit Hutch, what do you think I should start next? I know a lot of you are gonna be like, the rabbit hutch, but I'm, some part of me is leaning towards this. I have a good friend, my friend Lori over on Bookstagram just finished this and loved it, but I've heard far less about this than this, so I'm interested to see what you think. So let me know in the comments if you read either one of these, uh, what I should dive into. And I'm saving this other one for last, which was probably a huge mistake because it's massive and dense, um, which is Black Leopard, Red Wolf by Marlon James, but I'm hoping maybe I can um, do a mix of audio and text since it is very dense. I, I don't want to just listen to it because I'm afraid I could um, space out. So those are my four that are left. Wish me luck. Um, now on to book mail. Let's start as I'm sorry, coming so close right in your faces. Um, one of the things I just received today actually um, is one of the books from the Aspen Words list, which I've heard nothing but great things about, How Not to Drown in a Glass of Water by Angie Cruz. So that's one I'm excited about. Um, also, a book from earlier this season. Some of this book mail that I'm showing you is stuff that I had wanted earlier in the year and I never got it. And now I've seen it popping up on Pango. A lot of these books I got from like Pango or from like a Facebook group selling books because, you know, and so I've got them for cheap. Uh, Yonder was one of those that came, um, this was a, this is a arc that came with a purchase of another book from someone on Facebook. Uh, but I've heard great things about this book. Um, the Water Dancer Meets the Prophets in this spare, gripping, and beautifully rendered novel exploring love and friendship among a group of enslaved black strivers in the mid-19th century. So that's Yonder. Um, I, you know, I did the literary FOMO dive and got the Cormac McCarthy box set of uh, The Passenger and Stella, uh, Stella Maris, or Maris, 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 potato, potato. Let's call the, so, but I, uh, I don't know when I'll get to these, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, they may end up just looking really nice on my shelf for a while, and I haven't really heard anyone say yet oh my god the passage was so astounding that I immediately dove into the next one so I'm taking that as a cue that it's really pretty and will look nice on a bookshelf um, The Magic Kingdom by Russell Banks I gotta read you a little bit about this because um, I would have literally been at Disneyland in 1971, a property speculator named Harley Mann begins recording his life story onto a reel-to-reel -reel machine. Reflecting on his childhood in the early 20th century, Harley recounts that after his father's sudden death, his family migrated down to Florida swamplands, mere miles away from what would become Walt Disney World. To join a community of Shakers, led by Elder John, a generous man with a mysterious past, the colony devoted itself to labor, faith, and charity, rejecting all temptations that lay beyond the property. Through this way of life initially saved Harley, though, sorry, not though, not, though this way of life initially saved Harley and his family from complete ruin, when Harley began falling in love with Sadie Pratt, a consumptive patient living on, on the grounds, his loyalty to the Shakers and their conservative worldview grew strained and ultimately broke. As Harley dictates his story across more than half a century, meditating on youth, Florida's ever-changing landscape, and the search for an American utopia, the truth about Sadie, Elder John, and the Shakers come to light, clarifying past and present alike. The Magic Kingdom. Another one that I got from one of these um, sales online from people who are selling their books oh, it was Mount Chicago. I love this cover so much by Adam Levin. I never read Bubblegum, which came out, I think, two years ago. And one of the little... Bubblegum had this bright pink bubblegum cover 
But one of the quirks about it, when you took it out, I think they sent it out in a sleeve, it smelled like um, bubble gum. Anyway, this does not smell like parakeet. A one in 10 billion natural disaster devastates Chicago. A Jewish comedian, his most devoted fan, and the city's mayor must struggle to move forward while the world quite literally caves beneath their feet. With this polyphonic tale of Chicago-style politics and political correctness, stand-up comedy and Jewish identity, celebrity, drugs, and animal psychology, Levin has constructed a monument to laughter, love, art, and resilience in an age of spectacular loss. A Heart That Works, Rob Delaney. Um, Rob Delaney, for those of you who don't know, is a, was a stand-up and also, he was a stand-up and then he um, was an actor who created um, this really wonderful show on um, uh, Amazon called Catastrophe. Uh, and he'll be forthcoming, coming on a new Apple TV show uh, with Vince Vaughn called um, uh, Bad Monkey, which is based on the book by Carl Hyacin. But Rob's uh, young son uh, came down with um, a brain tumor and ultimately died. And this is the story. I saw him last week or the week before on a morning talk show, uh, and he was talking to Gail King, who was hosting. And he talked about how Gail King uh, had come into his dressing room to talk to him before the show started. And she saw him and broke down in tears. And um, which he said he so appreciated because he wanted, he wants people to be sad. He wants, he said, this, what happened to me and what happened to my wife and I was a horrible, horrible, horrible thing. And I, 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 so it meant so much to him to see her having a human and real reaction to him and not just kind of like, oh my God, so hard, you're such a survivor. So I heard that and I immediately went out and bought the book because listening to him talk just for the 30 second sound bite of this on, uh, social media I was sobbing so I know that this is going to freaking destroy me uh, and strangely I it's okay I, I'm I'm really uh, I'm really excited to read this excited it's a weird word but I'm looking not looking forward to three already you understand um, okay this I first of all I have two books that almost look like they could be um, companions an, this cover is so beautiful. How Far the Light Reaches, A Life in Ten Sea Creatures by Sabrina Imbler. So I'm going to tell you about Sabrina Imbler. Um, she's a writer and a science journalist living in Brooklyn. Uh, their first chap book, which I guess that's slang for chapter book, uh, Dyke, geology in parentheses, was published by Black Lawrence Press. Their essays and reporting have appeared in various publications, including Defector Media, The New York Times, The Atlantic Catapult, and Sierra. So um, what they do is profile 10 of ocean's strangest creatures, drawing astonishing connections between their lives and ours, and illuminating wondrous models of survival, adaption, identity, sex, and care on our faltering planet. Um, this is a slim little bugger, so it's probably not going to take forever to get through, and I kind of love that. But again, like, just look at how beautiful that is. Um, so, in light of the fact of how much I, you know, have been going octopus crazy this year, um, I thought, oh, this will be a good little coda to that. Uh, okay, similar weird covers, uh, in a way. Uh, Meet Us by the Roaring Sea. I mean, not really, but they just seem to kind of like. Uh, Meet Us by the Roaring Sea by Akil Kumarasamy. Um, 
This sounds interesting. In the near future, a young woman finds her mother, mother's body starfished on the kitchen floor in Queens and sets out on a journey through language, archives, artificial intelligence, and TV for a way back into herself. She begins to translate an old manuscript about a group of female medical students beset by a drought and living at the edge of a war as they create a new way of existing to help people around them. As she works on the translation, her life and the manuscript become entangled. I love these kind of meshed things that happen. Later, the arrival of a childhood friend, a stranger, and an unusual AI project force her to question her own moral compass. How involved are we in the suffering of others? What does real compassion look like? And how do you make a better world? I don't know, all of it sounds really interesting to me. The cover was what initially drew me in. I thought it looked really cool. So, and I love FSG who is publishing this. I think they do really cool stuff. Um, now is not the time to panic by Kevin Wilson. This is, you know, kind of all over the place now. Um, so I don't really need to say a lot about it. I really enjoyed nothing to see here. So I'm interested to see what he does with this one as well. And finally, so the last book I'm gonna share with you um, was something that Little Brown sent me, thank you, and it's called As Long As the Lemon Trees Grow by Zulfa Katu. Um, I knew nothing about this book and then I started to see some people talking about it. It's a young adult book that everyone's saying is just beautiful and heartbreaking. I'm gonna, this will be the last thing I'll leave you with today as I read to you the blurb in here. Salama Kassab was a pharmacy student when she cries, when the cries for freedom broke out in Syria she still had her parents and her big brother. She still had her home and an average teenager's life. Now Salama, Salama volunteers at a hospital in Homs, helping the wounded who flood through the doors daily. Secretly though, she is desperate to find a way out of her beloved country before her best friend and sister-in-law, Layla, gives birth. As her desperation grows, her PTSD takes physical shape in the form of companion Quaff, who haunts her every move. I had to look up Quaff, it's K-H, for those who don't know, K-H-A-W-F, and the literal meaning is, is fear. So, but even with Quaff pressing her to leave, Salama is torn between loyalty to her country and her will to survive. Salama, Salama must contend with bullets and bombs, military assaults, and her shifting sense of morality before she might finally breathe free. And when she comes across his path with the boy she was supposed to meet one fateful day, she starts to doubt her resolve in leaving home at all. Salama must learn to see the events around her for what they truly are, not a war, but a revolution, and decide how she too will cry for serious freedom. Perfect for fans of The Book Thief, yay, and Salt to the Sea, this stunning speculative debut burns with the fires of hope, romance, and possibility, a love letter to Syria and its people. I will leave you with that today. So thank you for stopping by. I'll see you all soon and have a great day or evening, everybody. Bye.